Hello again. I am sorry that I haven't been able to make a video for a long time, but I have been very busy. But here is my Cobalt video, and so I'm going to talk to you a little bit about Cobalt, and then we're going to get to some very interesting Cobalt chemistry. Um, so Cobalt is, I think, a very, very cool element in that it is the very first element, if you go along the periodic table, that was not, that isn't created in stars. Um, and it's not created in stars because, as you'll know if you watched my iron video, nuclear fusion at iron actually begins to consume more energy than it produces. So even if a star is hot enough to fuse iron, the star will then collapse very quickly because there isn't enough energy being generated to counteract the force of gravity. So cobalt and all elements heavier than it um, are created in supernovae. Now, I'm not going to dwell too, too long on that, but I'll just tell you that cobalt specifically is, is created during what's called the R process, or rapid nu uh, neutron capture, where iron nuclei gain many neutrons very quickly, become unstable, and then decay to form many other elements. So, what about cobalt's uses? Well, cobalt is mostly, in terms of uh, the amount, like percentage of amount produced, mostly is used in super alloys. Cobalt steels are extremely, extremely strong and uh, are used in many applications such as aircraft and um, oil rigs where that is necessary. Cobalt is also used uh, as a catalyst for organic synthesis, which is very, I think, is particularly interesting. Specifically, um, uh, xylene, which is a benzene derivative with two methyl groups arranged, um, in this case, in, for this particular one, opposite each other on the benzene ring. Uh, it catalyzes the oxidation of those methyl groups to form carboxylic acid groups. In this case, it forms terephthalic acid, which can then be uh, polymerized to form plastics. Cobalt has been used for a long time and still is also used um, in pigments. Not the element itself, but its compounds. Many cobalt compounds are bluish in color, and that's what gives cobalt blue glass and um, ceramics its color. Another use for cobalt is in rechargeable batteries. In uh, many lithium ion batteries, lithium cobalt oxide is a main ingredient. What it does is uh, allows the lithium to ionize, leaving the uh, complex of cobalt oxide and lithium. And then when it, when the lithium gains its electrons again, to then join the complex again, allowing uh, back and forth um, and for the battery to be rechargeable. All right. Now let's head down to the lab and explore some of the very interesting uh, chemistry that cobalt offers. The first experiment I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, dissolve, or I'm going to take some cobalt dichloride, cobalt two chloride hexahydrate, and I'm going to simply heat it up and drive off the water of crystallization. Now you will see what happens. I'm not going to tell you. The next experiment is going to be taking a, a solution of cobalt chloride, which will be complexed uh, in a hexa-aqua complex um, with six, waters, uh, six water molecules in the complex, and then adding chloride ions to the solution and shifting the equilibrium um, to the right by various me methods such as chloride ion concentration or temperature change, moving the equilibrium from a hexa-aqua complex to a tetrachloro complex. And you'll be able to see that this change in uh, equilibrium because of a color change. Um, after that, um, we will explore another complex of cobalt, uh, hexaamine cobalt-3 chloride. And this is uh, cobalt in the 3 plus oxidation state, which is actually, cobalt th in the 3 plus oxidation state is very, very unstable with uh, binary compounds, pretty much only fluorides and oxides, some sulfides. 
but when it's in a complex, it's much more stable. So we will then make, we will make the hexaamine complex. I will then react cobalt metal with hydrochloric acid, and you'll see the really beautiful color change as the clear acid turns blue from uh, the, chloro, the cobalt chloro complex forming. Here I'm going to show you an example of a physical color change. So here I have cobalt chloride hex, cobalt 2 chloride hexahydrate. And you see it's a nice pink color. Now hexahydrate means that there are six water molecules trapped in the crystal structure per cobalt chloride molecule. Um, what I'm going to do is heat it up on a hot plate and drive off that water trapped in the crystal structure. Now check out, see what, see what you see um, happen when the water goes away. You'll see the crystals start to, they almost look like they're melting, but they're actually just dissolving in the, in the water that was emitted from their crystal structure. And you'll see a very nice color change where the pink color disappears and it's replaced with the quintessential cobalt blue. Now this cobalt blue actually comes from the anhydrous or dehydrated form. And the reason for the color change has to do with quantum mechanics and electron energy levels. I'm not going to get into the details of that now. To prove that this is in fact a physical reaction and not a chemical one, I am now going to add some water back into the sample to see if I can try to rehydrate the cobalt and get it to turn pink again. It doesn't per turn pink immediately, or at least not all of it does, but as I stir you can see that the solution is slowly, slowly turning lighter and is becoming more and more pink. After a little more stirring you can see the solution has turned pink again. Alright, so here I just have some dissolved cobalt 2 chloride hexahydrate and I'm going to now create a whole new complex with this salt. Right now this is the hexa-aqua complex, but I'm going to add hydrochloric acid, which will increase the chloride ion concentration. When the chloride ion concentration gets sufficiently high, chloride will start to displace the water in the complex, and it's actually going to start forming the tetrachloro 2 minus complex so the cobalt tetrachloro 2 or er, tetrachloro cobalt 2 minus complex now the cobalt itself still has a 2 plus oxidation state but the uh, complex as a whole now has a 2 minus oxidation state and as you can see this has the similar blue color to the previous example the anhydrous cobalt 2 chloride but this is not the same thing this is actually a, a whole different complex, but it's still a very similar color, even darker than the previous complex. To demonstrate that this is in fact an equilibrium between the two complexes when there are Cl ions present, I'm adding some water. The water is reducing the Cl ion concentration sufficiently to uh, remove the Cl from Cl ions from the complex and introduce the water back into the complex forming the pink complex. So there you see the, comp the equilibrium has been shifted back once again. In these two test tubes I have identical uh, hexa-aqua complex cobalt solution which I made in the previous clip. Now if you look at the equation, at the, the chemical equation at the bottom, you'll notice that the hexa-aqua complex actually has heat on that side of the equation. So what I'm doing now is I'm heating with a propane torch the left test tube. And when I heat it, because um, right now it's reached equilibrium towards the left-hand side of the equation, when I add heat, it's going to move the equilibrium in the direction that absorbs heat. In this case, it's moving it towards the right, or the tetrachloro complex, which is blue. So as you can see, the equilibrium is now shifting towards the blue complex, because the blue complex absorbs heat when it's created. Just to prove to you that the uh, solutions are exactly the same, 
I'm going to now heat up the right hand solution with the propane torch. And as you can see, it also turns blue. Here is footage of the test tubes cooling down and the color uh, coming back to the normal pink. To begin, take about one gram of cobalt chloride. It doesn't have to be exact, as this is the limiting reagent and it's not stoichiometric. Then take um, about 0.7 of a gram of ammonium chloride and put them both in a test tube. Then add a, enough water to dissolve both and dissolve them. Now that uh, they are dissolved, we move on to the next step. I'm going to add 1.5 milliliters of 30% ammonia, uh, aqueous ammonia solution. This, the ammonium chloride, and the hydrogen peroxide that I'm yet to add are all in excess. And this is okay. We want them to be in excess. Now, you'll see as I'm adding the ammonia that no nothing really happens. It's forming a separate layer, but there's no chemical reaction. Now I'm going to add um, 0.5 of a milliliter of 30% hydrogen peroxide and we're going to end up with the blackish precipitate of cobalt hexaamine trichloride, cobalt hexaamine um, in the 3 plus oxidation state. And there you go, there it is. Um, I'm now going to redo or uh, make the same complex that I made last time but I'm going to use a different oxidizer and do it by a different method. So here I already have the cobalt chloride and ammonium chloride dissolved and now I'm adding the aqueous ammonia. Up till now the different procedures are exactly the same. The difference is my oxidizer. Here I have a very simple rudimentary oxid oxy map torch that I got for about 50 bucks from Home Depot. The yellow cylinder is map gas and the red cylinder is oxygen gas. So what I've done is I've connected it to the torch and then on the torch connected the torch to a plastic tube. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the plastic tube and immerse it in the solution and then I'm going to turn on the oxygen uh, very slowly without turning on any map and slowly bubble oxygen, elemental oxygen gas uh, through the solution as, as my oxidizer. Um, the, you could also do this with air but air has a much lower concentration of oxygen so you need to use activated charcoal as a catalyst. Using pure oxygen I've found that I do not need the activated charcoal catalyst. Here I am bubbling oxygen through in, into the solution. After about a minute and 30 seconds, the solution is, is a very deep black. And um, yeah, so this is just another method for, for making the same complex. Um, I don't know if this method is better than the other method. Uh, I think they're about the same. But uh, there you go. I thought that it might be um, cool to see the color change that would come from reacting pure cobalt metal, which you see in there, with hydrochloric acid. So here I'm adding the acid. And you can see that the clear acid is now turning blue in the presence of the cobalt. Here is sped up footage of the cobalt reacting. I heated it up a little bit to, to help it along. And um, after about 20 minutes, it gains this really nice dark color. 